Well, welcome back to Business 201, Principles of Marketing, with your online professor, Joseph Lane. Uh, we just finished, uh, uh, you probably just finished uh, reviewing uh, the chapter, four, uh, chapter 13 video, because on the final we're going to have uh, uh, the, the, the two chapters since test number three are chapters 13 and chapter 15. So we just finished reviewing chapter 13, which had to do with digital marketing. Now this is a chapter again we've been looking for. Chapter 15, the last chapter. Chapter 15 has to do with personal selling and direct response marketing. Personal selling is a big deal. Um, you know, some products, well, he starts off here, something I want you to be familiar with. Salespeople are essential in many transactions, especially high cost type items like automobiles and homes, specialty goods, uh, unsought goods. A lot of those goods are sold, personally sold. Insurance, financial planning type things. Uh, vehicles, fine jewelry, that type of thing. So most of the time, salespeople, are, and I guess I should, should at least put us a salesperson up here. By the way, that's a very good career. A person that is a good people person that wants to go into personal sales can make a very, a very good living uh, doing personal sales. Now, they're, they're not going to make a sale every time they try, but it's a, it's a, it's a, great, uh, it's a great career in business. All right, so personal selling is, and the internet, we talked about that in chapter 13, is the only two that has two-way communications. Personal selling, I can communicate directly with you one-on-one. -on -one. Answer your questions, I can promote my product and do things like that. The only other way that you can really do that is by way of the, uh, by way of the internet. Um, pull, my, pull my chair up kind of looking at our, our, our notes from this, this chapter, a couple things. Um, he talks there's about there's, there's, a, there's three broad categories of personal sales. Now, the type of personal selling I'm talking about is one of those three, and I'll mention that as we go through. Pretty good, pretty good uh, uh, notes for this chapter. Order takers. Order takers are, are people that uh, that you go up, the person behind the counter at a convenience store, you go up and you take something to them. Uh, a person at a drive-thru, you go up and take, uh, they process routine orders, they assist customers, they are available when the customer is ready. They basically will help the customer, the customer needs some help, like say in a clothing store, uh, but they are ready to process that person or to, to, to uh, bring about that sale whenever that person is ready to check out, so to speak. That's an order taker. Now, an order getter actively generates potential leads, uses persuasion, that sort of thing. What I'm talking about here, are these are order getters. These are people that go out and solicit sales. Real estate sales, pharmaceutical sales, um, um, car salespeople, salespeople that sell, you know, fine jewelry, uh, um, good furniture, that sort of thing, um, high-end type things. You know, the, the specialty and the unsought goods, the insurance folks, they actively pursue. They're not waiting for you to bring something to the counter or they're not ready just to ask you a question. They're actively pursuing a, a personal sale with you. And then support personnel, these are people that support and assist normally order getters. Let's say that I was a, a person in, with my company and that I sold uh, IT. Uh, I sold uh, information technology uh, systems to companies. Or I sold, let's say, uh, high-end copy machines to companies. Okay, I'm the salesperson and I know a good bit about the product that I'm trying to sell, but I'm not the expert. So I might bring with me, or I would bring with me, somebody that, that had the real depth in the, like, let's say it was a computer system of some type we were selling, that really could drill down deep and know that stuff. Or in the copy system, if it was going to be a copy system, that were experts in doing that. So sometimes order getters will also have support personnel with them. I'd be familiar with those three types of, uh, or three categories of uh, uh, 
broad categories of personal sales. Order getters are the ones that we are primarily talking about as far as actively seeking sales. Now there's something that you probably have never talked about, I haven't either, it's called, something called the, the buyer-seller dyad, D-Y-A-D. I doubt you've ever used the word dyad. About the only time I use the word dyad is when I get to chapter 15 in marketing. But he says what you have when you have personal selling, you have a buyer-seller dyad. That's that two-way communication between, between uh, the customer and uh, the, the, personal, the personal salesperson. So I'd like for you to be familiar. You might want to use this sometimes uh, somewhere or other uh, in, in your conversation. Two-way communication between a buyer and a seller. It, it would make you sound really, uh, really super smart if you could work some way into your conversation something about the buyer-seller diet. Okay. Uh, anyway, I'd be familiar with that. Now, also laid out on your, your handout is the selling process the selling process. Now I didn't put it up here quite like it's on your handout because on your handout it's I mean it's very clear for you. But this this person who does personal sales, there's a there's a process that you go through when you do that personal selling. You first of all you prospect for leads. Depending on what you want to sell or you're trying to sell, you want to pick those people. You want to pick those people that are most likely to buy your prospect. You want to, your product. You want to prospect. Secondly, you've got to you've got to prepare your your sales approach. You've got to, you've got to prepare your your message, so to speak. Uh, next, you need to determine the the customer wants. Then you give your sales presentation. You answer any questions that they may have. You try to then bring about a closing. If you get a closing, or even sometimes if you don't, follow up. So that's kind of the selling process, and I put this on our, our handout, our handout for us. Let me just talk about a couple of things. Prospecting for leads. The, the most difficult way to prospect is what's called cold canvassing. Probably misspelled, uh, uh, close. If you were selling real estate, lakefront property, pretty expensive lakefront property, how would you prospect? Well, who might be interested in that? Doctors, professional people, retirees, sports, sports persons that like to fish or hunt or whatever on, on the water. So you would, you would prospect, you would try to reach those particular folks. The worst way to do it would be cold canvassing. Uh, you go out and, and you go and you sit out in the mall and as people walk by you say, would you like lakefront property? Would you like lakefront property? Or you go door to door. Would you like to move to the lake? That's what cold canvassing is. You know, so so that's the least the least favorable way I guess that you can say uh, to do uh, to do prospecting, and I, I would I would be familiar with that that term cold canvassing. Okay, then we talked about preparing a, a pre-sales approach. You've got to do that, determining your customer wants. We talked about that, giving up giving a sales presentation. Now, I, I don't think I put it in here. So I want you to be familiar, and, I, and I'll give them to you. I, I want you to be familiar with the three probably most common types of sales presentations. There's the stimulus response, stimulus response sales presentation. That's where you say something and you're expecting a canned answer. It's kind of like the, a canned sales pitch. Do you need a so-and-so? Would you like to have a so-and-so? Yes, I would. Well, then I have, you see, it's kind of, I say this expecting you to say that, I say this expecting you to say that, hopefully that leading to a sale. Canned sales pitches in 2020 are really not very effective, but in some sales, especially uh, in sales, sales of certain type items, uh, I know I had, a, uh, I had a person sell some, was trying to sell some Cutco knives to us and they had a canned sales pitch. Do you want expecting this? If I'd probably given the wrong answer, it would have probably messed them, it would probably messed them all up. Okay, uh, the second type is what's called a needs satisfaction type of approach. 
I guess I could put put these for us. And the third one is a problem solution approach. Okay, the stimulus response, I've already kind of mentioned what that was. A need satisfaction is I am going to, with my product, my good or my service, I'm going to satisfy a need that you have. You have a need for such and such. Uh, you bought that lakefront property. It really looks nice there. You don't have a boat. So I'm going to sell you something you really need. So I'm going to talk to you about being able to sell. It, it, it's not about my product, it's about your need. The third one is a problem solution. If you have a particular problem, uh, I've driven by your house and I see that you've got a tree that's dying that's close to your, your house. Uh, if that tree fell on your house, uh, I'll be glad to come and cut that tree down. That's a needs, that's a problem solution type. So I'd be familiar with the three, the three types of sale. There are others, but the three biggies. Stimulus response, need satisfaction, problem solution. Okay? Okay. Um, something else he talks about. <coughs> when you hit the closing, very seldom, now that's not true. I'll, let me go with many times you are not going to immediately make a sale when you do the closing. Uh, you know, you finish everything up, okay, and it's kind of like, all right, are you ready to purchase it? Well, many times, the person's not ready to purchase it. And so, just be familiar with the fact that, that when it comes to closings, uh, at the closing point where you're trying to make the sale, many times you're not going to make that sale. So that makes this be really, really, really important. This is important two different ways. If, if you make the sale, what's better than selling somebody something once? Selling them twice or three or four times. So if you make that sale, make that follow-up. I had someone that, that sold furniture that was here at Delta a few years ago. And they said most of their, their business now comes from the same person coming back and buying more or referrals from that person that, that they, they referred that salesperson to some of their friends and things or relatives. So follow up, if you make the sale, is really, really, really important. But if you don't make the sale, well, I didn't make the sale, forget it. No. You want to follow up with that person. Did they have any additional questions? Were they just not sure? I mean, follow up in the right way because just because you didn't make that sale initially doesn't mean that you can't make that sale at all. So I would be familiar with the three types or, or, or you know, the three types of sales presentations. I'd be familiar that few, say, a few sales are closed immediately after, uh, after the closing. Sometimes you have to do follow up with those. Okay. Now, that's kind of a little bit about personal. Again, personal sales is a great, great career. A great career. So then he talks a little bit about direct response marketing. Now, what is direct response marketing? Uh, direct response, I guess that might be a be familiar with too. Direct response marketing is where the marketer markets directly to the customer. No middlemen, no anything like that. Direct marketing, promotion of the product from the producer directly to the consumer without going through the channels of distribution. Remember we talked about that? And of course, we talked about in chapter 13, the digital age. Well, gosh, with internet and everything else now, it is so much easier for companies to market directly to customers. Now, they're not going to be able to sell all of their products that way. Most of their products are probably still going to be sold going through the channel of distribution, you know, wholesalers, retailers, and that sort of thing. But direct marketing is a big part of marketing. It's a way that where we're, we're producers or those that have the goods or produce the goods or service market directly to the customer. That's direct marketing. Okay, he talks about a couple of things. I put it on the bottom of your handout, kind of on the left-hand side. Talks about databases. 
And I think we talked a little bit about databases in chapter 13. What marketers try to do is get information on their customers and their potential customers. The more information you can get, if you know what zip codes that your customers are, you know, the majority of your customers, what zip codes do they come from? Then when you do promotions, that can help you. The more information you can get, the more data you can get and this idea of, of data and building up databases so that you can, you can, it's capturing and storing information about your, you know, your, uh, your folks. Okay, now, there's two terms I put down here for you I want you to be familiar with. Data warehousing. That's simply taking all that data that you're collecting, either by uh, surveys, by uh, walking out of the store and getting their, their zip code or whatever. That's taking all that information and stacking it up. Man, I got piles and piles and piles. I'm filled up all of room 363 with information that I've received. Well, let's don't fill up, let's don't fill up room 363. Let's fill up a little bit of a computer. So that's what data warehousing is. It's putting into the computer, it's capturing and storing data about your customers and potential customers that internally your company can use. And certainly marketers are going to be one of the big users of data warehousing. And I'd be familiar with what data warehousing is. All right, you've got all this information warehoused. Let's mine it. Let's go in and use it. It's great to have information, but if you don't use it, it's not going to do you any good. So data mining is simply, is simply looking at that data. You know, what patterns does it show? What profiles does it show? What relationships does it show? Uh, you, you know, as far as your customers are concerned. So I'd be familiar with data warehousing, I'd be familiar with data mining. Now, let's go back over to direct marketing. Promotion of the product from the producer directly to the consumer without the channel. We've already said what that was. Now look what I said number one. The key to direct marketing, that's where the, the marketer of the company markets directly to me. Well. What if me is not interested? Then you've wasted a lot of time and effort. So you see number one here, the key to direct marketing is the quality of the information in the database. The information in the database, which you have data warehoused, you have warehoused that, and now you've mined it. You've gone in and got it, and are using it to do direct marketing. So the better your, your data is, the quality of your information in your database, the better you're going to be able to reach those customers or those potential customers with direct marketing. All right. And then he says, direct mail is the most common form of direct marketing. Uh, this is a point where if y'all were all sitting in here with me in class, I would ask you about what kind of direct marketing stuff do you get? Do you ever, you ever get any letters uh, in the mail from, from companies marketing to you, anything like that? Um, now. I do. A lot of times students will tell me, yeah, for, for, uh, for credit cards. You know, that's, that's, I get direct mark. Sometimes I get direct marketing when it comes to phones or, or direct TV or stuff like that. Or I, I get it for, uh, um, I don't know, other things. Now with me, I get those same sort of things too. I also get things about insurance. It, it seems that folks that get slightly older, companies are always wanting to sell them insurance or supplemental insurance or something like that. And so I'll get something from a company. Hey, this is something you really, really need. And then I'll get the second notice. This is something you really, really need. And then I'll get the third notice. This is your third and final notice. And I think, thank goodness, I'm tired of throwing these things away. In about two weeks, what happens? The first notice comes again. All right, okay. But that's direct marketing. Uh, so this is kind of what we wanted to talk about uh, in chapter 15. Chapter 13 and chapter 15, are, there's not a humongous amount in those chapters. They're relatively small chapters. So when we get ready to do a review for the final, you're going to notice a good bit of the review comes from those first 
those first uh, chapters 1 through 12 and chapter 14. You know, some of the tests, of course, will come through, come out of chapter, uh, chapter 13 and chapter 15. I don't think I had any, any no's in chapter 15. Uh, we just talked about uh, salespeople, and you know, normally there were you know higher higher cost things. Uh, we talked about that. We were familiar with the broad categories. We were familiar here at the bottom of, of my handout. We wanted to be familiar with what uh, uh, data warehousing is, what data mining is. We want to be familiar with what direct marketing is, and we want to be familiar with that couple of things about direct marketing. The key to good direct marketing is the quality of information in the database. And the most common type of d direct marketing is direct mail. It's direct mail that you, you, uh, you receive. I think that's pretty close to chapter 15. Now what we're going to do, or I'm going to do, uh, we're going to finish this chapter 15 in a few minutes, and then the next thing I'm going to video for you is a, uh, a finals review. So I'm going to sit here in my chair here, and I'm going to get. I'm going to sit down and review everything for you for your final. Now, now I don't have to review chapter 13 and 15 because we've already done that. And we've gone through the nodes and be familiar with. But I'll review everything else in the text that could be a part of your final. Well, you know how we have to close out a class. We close it out, or, or a, a, a video class. We close it out with a loud noise so that Professor Pierce knows that we are done. So uh, we'll do that. You can holler and I'll do the clapping of the hands and we will be through with chapter 15. See you back for the review.